I've been asked by Mount Vernon to say a few things uh, about Washington's leadership and what light it might shed on the United States in this somewhat troubled time. Um, Washington uh, is generally regarded as primus inter pares, first among equals within the uh, greatest generation of political leadership in America, the founding generation. Um, I think it's fair to say that Benjamin Franklin was wiser, Thomas Jefferson was more intellectually sophisticated, John Adams was more informed uh, historically and better read, James Madison was more politically adroit, Alexander Hamilton was more brilliant. Hamilton would have got the highest grades on the SATs. But all of them agreed that Washington was their superior. What did they mean by that? Well, sometimes they said it very succinctly. They said, Washington always did the right thing rightly. Let's press that. What does that mean? There are three chapters in the American founding. When we win our independence, when we move from a confederation to a constitution, and that means to a nation, and when we create a government that consolidates that national power in a way that survives and endures as most young republics don't. Washington was the leading figure in each of the foundings. Um, he was, they all said, the only indispensable man. Let's press it, press it a bit further. Washington was trusted with power because he had demonstrated that he was willing to surrender it. He was, as one of his ablest biographers, Gary Wills put it, an aficionado of exits. We all know how he left the presidency after two terms and set the two term precedent um, confirmed by a constitutional amendment in 1951. But the other surrender of power that's more resonant and more relevant is in, in 1783, when uh, he appears in Annapolis and surrenders his commission and walks away as uh, commander in chief of the Continental Army at the end of the war. Present for that was uh, Thomas Jefferson, the representative of Virginia. And he said, and I read this now, the moderation and virtue of a single character probably prevented this revolution from being closed as most others have been by a subversion of the liberty it was intended to establish. What Jefferson was thinking of was Julius Caesar and Oliver Cromwell, who had retained power in the Roman Republic and in the English Commonwealth. Looking ahead, Napoleon wouldn't do it. Uh, Stalin wouldn't do it. Mao wouldn't do it. Castro wouldn't do it. Walk away from power. I think that the point here is that Washington was put together in such a way that he found it impossible to violate his obligation to the public interest. He can't talk to us now, but I will try to channel his wisdom for some final thoughts. Namely, what would he say to us now? I think he would say that we need to create a national service program, a domestic version of the Peace Corps that permits and encourages American youth to experience public service in a way that they have not for quite some time. Two or three generations have grown up since the draft was ended. And the civic sense that he presumed existed in the public um, has to some extent eroded. I also think that he would expect all high school graduates to be able to pass the civics test that all incoming immigrants must pass for citizenship. Right now, I think less than 30% of them could. And very specifically, in our coronavirus crisis, I think Washington would say citizenship provides rights and obligations. And we all have an obligation to others. And that means we should all be wearing masks in public places.
a simple message, but at this moment, I think one that I'm sure he would concur with. Thank you.